Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today, I am going to do something that I don't think I've ever done completely, and that is watercolor with my Distress Reinkers. So it's a fun way to get great color on any project. So let's get into it next. Here's a look at the products I'll be using today, and I'm very excited to be stamping with this little friend, because I think it's such a cute stamp. But the thing today that I'm doing, never have I ever painting with distress inks. Now, yes, this is my lucky Twisted Citron. It came this way with the label upside down, so I like to think of it as a very special just for me bottle. Now, I don't have reinkers in all the colors, so I had to look at the closest thing I have to an analogous color scheme, right? Colors that go, it won't stay, colors that go in rainbow order, right? So we can blend one into the next. And that's what I'm gonna use today. I've got a little, got a cute little well that I hardly ever use, got my little paintbrush, I've got some water. But first, I need to stamp this onto some watercolor paper. So let me get set up to do just that. I'm going to take out my little insert, right? Because of the cling depth, which you need to do. And I will say, if you've been on the fence about a Misty tool, which I feel like is the most fabulous tool in my studio, go with the larger one because you can do more with it. And even though I show my small one a lot, that's only because, I, I don't know, it's just because it fits in camera so nicely, but Here's what I do, and you don't have to do it this way. You can put your cling on the door. I always just put my cling inside. It's really six of one, a half dozen of the other. But I like to do this. I'm gonna place down my piece of watercolor cardstock, and or this is watercolor paper, it's not cardstock. I don't know which one this is. It's not, well, I'll have to do some research because I have some of the Fabriano Artistico, but this is not that. I reorganized some papers and I don't remember what this is called, so I'll have to look it up. But I put a little tape on here and then it stays on the door and then I push it into rather than the... So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to take some anti-static powder. This is from Tailored Expressions. Okay. Just run that all over to remove any static and oil. Okay, I've got my Versamark pad and I'll go ahead and ink this stamp up really well. I'll probably stamp it twice, but we'll just get a nice coating of the clear embossing ink. Bring this down and then I will grab my stamp press tool and press. This is just a little stampin' bug. And I might even stand up just to really get my body into it. It's my cardio for the day. Or would this be strength training? It might be strength training. And paper doesn't move. Ink up again. Sometimes I wish I had a sit to stand desk, although the desk I have is so wonderful, but I do like to stand sometimes for certain tasks. That should be good. I have my paper catch here, and I guess what I will do here, you can't see much. It looks like a big, whole, hot mess of nothing. I haven't done this in a really long time, so I do hope it works. And never say never. I'll clean my stamp in a little bit, but I want to get my, gosh, I can't see anything on there. Hope it works. You can't see anything. I can't see anything. It's just quite, uh, yeah. All right. We are going to take fine detail powder from Simon Says Stamp and sprinkle this and hope that the magic happens where we're going to see it. Now, this is going to be hard to see at the start of painting, too. I, uh, I hope that I'm not trying to write a creative check that my body is not ready to cash today, but we'll see. Okay, let it go, let it go. Oh, there it is. 
it's there. And that looks really good. Huh. All right. Way to go, Kath. I don't, I don't think it needs a lot more. We'll just let that slide. All right. Pattern is in place. I will funnel this all back in. <clears throat> Try not to spill it. The precious powder. Okay, and let's just wipe off the area before we heat set. Maybe we can see a little. I can see a little there. Let's get the heat tool warmed up and we will melt that powder. That took a while, but let's see. Did I get it all? You can see where the shine, well, there you can kind of see it, right? I just need to double check if the shine is everywhere. But of course the trick is not overheating the powder. Oh boy, that is hard to see. <laughs> all right, I, I'm gonna get set up for painting. This is gonna be tricky. Let's get set up to paint. So I'm gonna start here with my lovely, I'm gonna shake it a little, Twisted Citron, favorite green ever. And I'm just gonna put, oh, I got some on my paper already, look at me. Just that much, I guess, right? Cause you don't need much. And we'll just pretend like that didn't happen. <laughs> this is gonna be, you know what? I'm gonna have to put this up here because I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. Okay, and I'm probably going to just tilt this a little so I can see. I'm gonna take some water and I'm going to paint inside one of the balloons that I can see decently, okay? Go ahead and put water down. Now you know, can you kind of, well, you can't see anything. Let's talk, let's talk about our feelings. Um. You know I'm not really much of an artist, right? Like, I'm a crafter. I heard Gina Kay say that the other day, and I thought, that is perfect, right? Like, crafters can try just about anything they want to see what's going to shake out. And I love that, right? Because we're just, you know, we're crafting here. But I'm hopefully going to do what you're supposed to do here, which is, again, not too much, but enough water inside balloon one that it's going to take my color nicely. Look, I'm getting, God, okay, let's do that. We're fine, we're fine, we're gonna trim it down. Okay, so I'm gonna add some water, that's my dirty water, in here, because I don't want it to be, I want it to be kind of soft, but let's see what happens when we drop in, I'm gonna water that down a little, our color. Now this is where I have no idea what I'm doing. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm scared. Okay. Let's just kind of feather that out. See, I like to turn my paper while I'm doing all the things because I want to see what my first balloon is going to look like. Okay. This could be a big old hot mess. And we won't know, we won't know until we get there. All right, so that's balloon one. Now that's not bad. We're just, we're just letting that go, okay? And maybe a little darker over here. I can take a little of the lower setting and just facilitate, okay? Just a little. I'm going to continue the process with the rest of my colors, but I'll put some music on and speed it up a little so we can get through this before the sun sets or rises, depending on when you're watching.
So now the piece is mostly dry and I want to find a color for my greeting. I pulled out my little swatch book. This is, I, ha I have little swatch books for all the companies whose cardstock I use. So I know this is Simon Says Stamp because they have cotton candy, they have dull pink. I never bother putting the names on because I know them, but you could definitely have a ring that has both the company name and the color. In fact, I'll put a little card up here to the right if you want to later check out the little swatch video where I show how I made this. But I'm trying to decide, actually, gosh, you know what would look really pretty on there? Royal purple might look good. Either that, for my greeting, that, that's what I'm thinking about right now. I could do a royal purple. I could do lavender. So funny, I've never even thought royal of royal purple. Hmm, what I wanna do is just emboss a greeting in white on some cardstock. I think, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a couple, but I think I'm gonna start with or Island Blue, oh my goodness, the color choices, I tell ya. Or Audrey Blue as well. Audrey Blue is also very nice. I don't know, I'm torn. I think if I did Lavender, it's gonna lighten the whole design up. So I'm gonna pop this into a book while I work just to let it flatten out a bit and we'll get set up to stamp our greeting. I figured that I will take these off for now, but I wanna show you my little scrubber that I love from Hero Arts, the scrubber block is great for cleaning stamps, both clear and cling. I can just put a little spritz of my Simon Cleaner and just go over and clean off the stamp. And not that this is hard to clean. This is, you know, I just had the Versa mark on, but I love this. And these pads come off, they are replaceable, or you can take it off so you can wash it if it gets really, you know, wash it with some dish soap and let it air dry. But I love this, this is new in my studio, love it. So then I can take my cling off. I haven't actually created a storage pocket for this, but I will at some point. And then I can bring my insert mouse pad back in. This is the little foam pad. And I tape it with that tape just so that it doesn't move. And now I can stamp my greeting. I think I'm going to pop this in here and let's pick a greeting. I love this set so much. I think it's so fun and I'm not sure, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna do big B-Day vibes because I think that's fun. And go ahead here and I'll kind of preserve my cardstock a little. All right, go ahead and pick this up and I'm just gonna reposition my paper take my anti-static powder and I'll go ahead and powder this up just so that when I stamp my embossing ink down, you know, the, the white powder that I'm going to use sticks only to the ink. I'll ink this up, like that. bring it down and press to transfer. And I think I'll hit that Again, just for a nice coating. I might need to re-ink my Versamark pad. It's a little, it's feeling a little dry. I use it a lot. Okay, how does that look? Oh, you know what? I might even go one more time. I love when you can see what you're stamping. Oh, so nice, as opposed to like, you know, white. All right, let's get set up again for heat embossing. Got my white powder again, and we'll just sprinkle that on. Let that sit for a second. And slide off, and maybe give it one more. You know, I could double emboss this. I don't do that very often. It definitely gives you a nice look, but I think we'll just see. That looks pretty good. Let's see what one looks like. I have the coordinating die taped into place and I'll just pop this here onto my Gemini plates and we'll run it through. All right, take that out, pop that out. And I have my big B-Day vibes greeting ready for my card project. I put some Simon Says Stamp foam squares on the back. I kind of like this because 
you've got your purples and then we're kind of covering up a little bit of the blue. But now is the time to crop. Okay, that's why I love, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna take a little bit off this. Gosh, let's try that. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take a little off the outer edge just so this fits perfectly on my plate. And I'm gonna figure this out. So this is where, you know, you start to move things around and you crop what you want. And so doing something first Right, it lets you come in. I'm gonna take, let's see, the third one in and see. And this is how you know that it doesn't really, you know, if you don't paint everything perfectly, it's fine because we are cropping. We wanna have the crop. I wanna take enough portions where I get some visual interest for this, but that's, that's what I want. So we're gonna take our tape, tape it into place, and don't worry, you know, sometimes you're gonna waste a little and that's okay, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna take a little more off the side just so I can angle my die as I go through just to minimize the bump factor. All right, pop this on and again, we'll run that through. Now I have my panel all nicely trimmed for my card. Oh, I love it. All right, let's get a note card and put this together. While that's flattening, I had to I had to try it again. I wasn't loving the detail on this. Check it out. We'll come in close. I hope I hope the camera will pick it up. This is with kind of a dry Versamark pad. And then look at the difference with a fresh pad from Simon Says Stamp and the same powder. I mean, it's, it just looks better. Sometimes you have to pay attention to your pads and if they need re-inking. I'm gonna go with this friend because this one is good to go. I'm going to make my note card now and I also stamped and embossed two little possible greetings to layer in. I don't know which one I will use and I will trim down, but I'm gonna score this at five and a half inches so this is 11 inches by four and a quarter. Give that a fold and I'll take my Teflon bone folder and give that a nice press. All right, I will tape that closed so it doesn't pop open. I'm gonna use my little mini trimmer here to cut down these little banners that I stamped and embossed. Give that a little cut there. And I just used some Simon Says Stamp black cardstock for these. And again, I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna use them, but sometimes I will just stamp little things. I'm either gonna have it say, Big B Day Vibes headed your way, or sending, because I, I wouldn't use them both. I don't think that would make sense. I try to make sense on my cards, all right. I've put a little extra foam tape on the back of my panel just so that it will keep it from any of the warping showing up. So let's take the backers off. Okay, and I'm gonna stand up here. My head might get in the way for a second, so admire that beautiful silver foxy hair. Look at that sticking right up into the camera. And pop that down on the note card. I think that looks good. Oh, I love it. So now before I, see, and I like that because now, you know, the purple sort of is connected through the greeting, but do we want to have big B-Day vibes headed your way? Or do we want to have a little sending big B-Day? I don't know if I like, <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if I like either. But And I don't know like what I want it to be above, right? Like a little popping up and over. Huh, what, what do we think of, well, it's kind of hard to see. Sending big B-Day vibes or <laughs> big B-Day vibes headed your way. I, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not feeling, maybe it's the banner angle that I'm not liking. You know what I mean? Having that little banner on there. It certainly isn't needed. Let me try something. I'm gonna cut the banner off. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know, right? You don't know. 
until you get there. And then you say, hmm, maybe it would be better. Oh, now I got too much on that end. Okay. Hold it down. Maybe not having a little banner is the way to go because then it looks less, I don't know. I don't know. I might, I might, I might like that better. What do we think? Because I think I will put some sequins on here. Same thing with this friend. Although the thing is with the sending, I like, I like that up there. Could do that. No, no, no. See, sometimes you, when you're trying to force something to work, eh, you have to take a step back. I actually think this will work. However, I want to do a thin foam square, thinner depth. Uh, I have two law, two depths. It's very hard for me to say that. From Simon Says Stamp, one of them are thinner and one of them are thicker. And I am just going to take a little piece here. Oh, I guess that's already cut. So that this has successive dimension, right? One is closer to the card and B-Day vibes will pop up still and over it if I decide that I want that right there. But I think it's kind of cute. Maybe even more of a tilt. All right, let's take that off and let's place our greeting. Jewels, not tools. Here we go. Thank you. I don't know what I'm doing there. Getting a little carried away with the, uh, the fingernails. All right, now I am going to get my liquid glue and we are going to add liquid glue to the back of the foam squares for that little float time, right? We like a, we like a little hydroplane and I just do this so that I don't have to commit hard and fast if I have it in the wrong place, but I feel like, I feel like this is gonna be a pretty easy one to place down. And we will go right there in the center. Big B-Day vibes, maybe up a little because of that greeting that I'm gonna put on there. But I mean, that's pretty close to the center, right? And one way I can also make sure this is straight is by bringing in my Simon ruler and going like that with that B. I think that looks good, okay? And check it up here too. Love these rulers. We also have this in a, um, a 12 inch now for anyone who likes big rulers and you cannot lie. Let's get this off here. And again, same thing. I'm gonna, I think this little tiny bit of black is kind of nice too, but I love these colors. I mean, I am not a fancy painter and the whole idea here is you just stick with your three colors, right? Stick with your three analogous colors, go in rainbow order, and you are going to be good to go. All right. Look at that right under there like that. Oh, I think it's very cute. I have the perfect sequin for this. So let me grab those. The sequin I'm going to use is this calls for confetti moonstone because it has just the purple and green tones, just the way the light catches it is really cool. Also, I've had people ask me about these little containers and this calls for confetti now sells these individually or something very similar to this. I have a large Elizabeth Ward bead tray uh, that I bought, I bought two of them uh, a while ago and I keep all my sequins in, but as you know, if you watch my channel, I really don't use the variety that I could use. So, you can get them individually as well. And it's just nice to put your sequins in there and give them a nice orderly fashion. All right, let's 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 put some of these on and see what happens. I like, well, maybe actually, you know what? Maybe, oh, and I just learned a great term that one of you told me, actually a number of you told me, someone had asked me about confetti style sequins and how do you place them down? And a you place them so that the cup part is up. And apparently Gina K has a great term that she uses called cupward. You put them cupward. Leave it to Gina to have the smartest things ever. All right. I think that is all we're going to do. We're just going to have a little here and a little there. Is that cupward? Yes, it is. And you come up just a little like that. I think that's really nice, right? Just a little shine. We're kind of balancing out. Instead of coming out that way, I thought we'd come up that way. So 
Let's glue them down. Let's bring a little boop to the birthday. And that's boop with a B, my friends. All right. And, oh, boop. Way too much, but just let that sit and it'll dry. Sometimes I can't see boop, what I'm doing. That's fine. Press in a little glue. This is Connect Glue, by the way, boop, from Gina K Designs. And in one of her squeeze bottles. Boop. And boop. And that is my finished card project. Now this was involved, right? I haven't done something like this in, you know, quite a long time, actually. I mean, it's been, I mean, I haven't painted and I've I, I've never taken just re-inkers and filled up a tray and painted. If you use Distress Inks anyway, it's a really good idea to get the re-inkers because your pads, well, I mostly just have the mini cubes, they're gonna dry out over time and you're gonna wish you had more, but I am really glad I did this because it is a way to get a more saturated color than just smushing, right? And again, not, not a fancy painter, but that card, that definitely says big birthday vibes. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my channel, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notified when I have new videos. All supplies can be found in the YouTube description box that goes with this video, so check out my links if there's anything you are interested in picking up for your collection. Here are a few other cards where I did some painting, well, to the best of my ability. You don't have to be the greatest painter, just get some inks out and go. I'll see you in those videos.